Hi, thanks for watching this video. Uh, one of the things we're going to go over today is the uh, Lifehacker HTPC build as highlighted on the Lifehacker website. I've been wanting to build a HTPC for about a year now and I found this article on Lifehacker. It's a great article, uh, well put together, and I've been looking forward to completing this build for a while. So I went out and got all the components that were recommended by Lifehacker. Uh, the original components for this were the uh, the case was the Apex uh, MI-008 uh, Mini ITX. came with a 250 watt power supply. CPU uh, that was recommended was the AMD A4 5300. Uh, by the time I got around to building this, the 5300 was uh, replaced uh, by the 6300, which was same price but a little bit better processor. The motherboard was the ASRock uh, FM2A88X uh, ITX Plus. Uh, it supported a uh, FM2 Plus or FM2. Uh, it's uh, AMD. Uh, this was one that was recommended by Lifehacker. Uh, also, the memory I got was uh, the Corsair. Uh, I put in a one uh, four gig chip because uh, I figured I'd probably upgrade to eight gig at some point. The article recommends two two gig. I wanted to have the ability to upgrade to 8, so I just put in one 4 gig, uh, four gig stick. Hard drive that was recommended was the uh, Western Digital Green. Th um, I believe it was a 2 terabyte uh, internal drive. Uh, I went with a 3. The optical drive that was recommended was an LG uh, Blu-ray drive. I went ahead and stuck with that. It was good. And the operating system that was re um, recommended was the uh, Windows 8.1 64-bit. So that's what was recommended, but... Uh, one of the things you'll notice in the video is that I changed it up a little bit. Uh, the components that I ended up using that changed from what I originally went with was the, uh, I changed the case, which uh, changed the case to the NWIN BP671. And I changed the hard drive to a Seagate uh, three terabyte hard drive. Reason being was two things with the case. Uh, there's, uh, in my opinion, a design flaw in it. The power supply sits right above the CPU. So, and there's hardly maybe a millimeter of space between the two. So I was running into overheating issues. Now I looked at uh, all the other people that have done the build. Some people ran into the same issues and other people said, no, I didn't have any overheating issues. Whatever the case may be, you know, make your own decision how you, how you want to go with it. I decided to change the case and that helped my situation. You know, it's a little bit wider. It's not as uh, small as the original case, but I feel a lot better choosing a slightly larger case. Uh, and I also went with the Seagate 3 terabyte internal drive because I, I built three of these uh, HTPCs uh, uh, at one time. Got all three Western Digital hard drives. Uh, of the three original I got, two were DOA. Uh, so I sent those back, got two replacements, popped one in, installed the OS, and then it died on me. So I decided to steer away from the Western Digital line and just went ahead and went with Seagate. Haven't had a problem with those. So anyway, uh, those are the components that I used. Uh, as you can see, changed it up just a little bit from what Lifehacker had suggested. And that's why I say this is my, uh, my hacked version of the Lifehacker uh, HTPC build. Anyway, let's jump right into the actual build. Okay, as you see, we've got the uh, NWIN BP671 here. Uh, it's a nice case. Power supply sits beside the motherboard, so I didn't have to worry too much about the overheating issue on that, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I picked it. Comes with your basic uh, power supply uh, cables. You got a 20 pin plus four. Um, uh, it also comes with a built-in chassis fan, so that uh, 80 millimeter chassis fan. So that was good. I liked it. So as we're getting ready to put the motherboard in, uh, one of the best things to do is go ahead and remove the uh, what's the hard drive and the optical drive. Um, enclosure. So that gives you a little bit more room to work with whenever you're putting the motherboard in. So the motherboard that I got, it does uh, what you're going to see on here. Uh, it comes with the uh, back panel so that it's got all of your input outputs easily identifiable. Um, I really like this board because it's got the HDMI out and an HDMI ends. Uh, a lot of great stuff for hooking up to an HTPC. Uh, I've got my memory and my uh, processor and uh, fan on here because I pulled it out of a, another uh, build that I had done. Also attached on there are the um, Wi-Fi antenna cables. So once you get that in, go ahead and uh, screw it into the case. Just like any other case, a lot of times you got a, a few pieces that are hard to get to. So 
and get those screwed in there. Next thing uh, I did was I uh, went ahead and ran the Wi-Fi cables uh, back through the uh, back panel. Those are real easy to put on. A um, little difficult sometimes uh, putting the actual cable attached to the motherboard itself, but and just stick with it and get it done. Next thing I had to do was remove the uh, front bezel so that I could get the uh, optical drive uh, slot removed. It just pops right out and you can put it back in if you don't want to use an optical drive later. So it's a, a great little addition to the case. Next thing that I did was I uh, put the hard drive, the Seagate 3 terabyte hard drive into the hard drive enclosure. The, well, the optical drive, the hard drive enclosure. Really easy to put in. Just slide it in there. Just make sure that you've got your uh, outlets for your set of cables on the back and then just screw that back into place one thing that I was thinking about after doing this build uh, go ahead and leave the um, hard drive and and optical drive and closure out because that way it gives you a little bit more room to actually uh, plug in these cables that we're looking at right, right now like your switch your hard drive LED power LED and your reset switch those are kind of hard to get to if you have that enclosure in there. So just go ahead and leave those out, you know, and uh, it'll be a little bit easier to get in there. Also, uh, the board that I had, the chassis fan uh, power, which is right there, uh, makes it a little hard to get it in. So uh, one lesson learned, uh, leave the hard drive enclosure out until you get all of your power and everything hooked up. And then a little bit of cable management, get those cables tucked out of the way. Next thing you want to do is plug in uh, the cable for your front USBs that come on the, the case. There's, I believe, two USB on the front. and get that plugged into your, your motherboard. And next is your HD audio uh, plugged in on the side of your board. And then just tuck those cables to the side as well. One of the last things to put in is your uh, optical drive. Once again, that's our, our Blu-ray player so that we can use that with our HTPC, play uh, all our Blu-rays. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and hook your uh, SATA cables up uh, from your drives. Uh, I used the one, uh, I had two cables that came with the motherboard, one that had like a, a 90 degree angle connector and then another just a straight one. I used the 90 degree angle connector on the hard drive and the straight one on the optical drive. Helped out a little bit as far as that way the, the straight uh, connector wouldn't stick out and get in the way of the case uh, whenever I was closing the case. And then you're able to just kind of tuck everything over to the side. Next thing you want to do is uh, hook up the power to your drives. This was kind of a tight fit and kind of had to stretch the cables just a little bit uh, to their you know, full length so that it could, you know, fit. Instead of the drives being up and down next to each other, you had one on the side and then you had to go all the way around to the other side to plug in the last one. And once you do that, check all your connections. Make sure everything is hooked up and connected. Got all your fans hooked up and all that. And that's kind of what it looks like from a side view. Um, and the only thing left to do now is to put the case back on top. Uh, it's a really easy build once you just get it going. Uh, you get all the right components. Everything fits in really well. And as you can see, there's a vent on top right above uh, the cooler. So that it, the uh, cooler acts as kind of an exhaust fan. So that works out really good. Uh, make sure you snap the bezel back in, in place on the front. Got a few little holes right there where you can... Um, a few little divots where you can put some rubber feet for the case, depending on how you want it to sit, up or down. Only thing left to do now is install your operating system, which, like I said, I used Windows 8.1, the 64-bit, and then you're done. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch it. I hope it helped you out. Uh, I know there was not a lot of resources out there whenever I was banging my head up against the wall whenever the, the system kept overheating. So hopefully this helps out. Uh, thanks again. I'll leave a list of all the components down in the description. Thanks. Have a great day.